Well, you might remember a few weeks ago I bought a big slab of sirloin beef, which I'm going to uh, chop up into steaks. Well, I've had it in the fridge for a couple of weeks uh, because that was I was advised to keep it a little bit longer. It's a bit like hanging it. So um, it's now, I think, at least 28 days since it was killed. So it's going to be sort of well-aged meat now. So I'm going to get it out of the fridge in a minute and I'm going to chop some up. Uh, I think I'm going to cut a joint out of it and then I'm going to make some steaks. I'm going to freeze some of them. So uh, we'll have a look and see what it looks like. Uh, maybe even cook a steak. All right, let's go to our fridge. As you can see, it's covered in bonkers stuff. Pictures of the kids and awards for school and things. But um, I'm just going to go get a big piece of beef out. Got a nice bit of uh, pork in the back of there for a ham for Christmas. But this is the bad boy. Oh! Gosh, I've forgotten how big it was. It's even bigger than my chopping block. So um, what I plan to do is I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to keep this, like I said, a joint. And there's some nice big steaks out of it, but I'm going to have to cut the front off. It's going to be a bit wet. Uh, I might just cut that off by the sink, I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. Hmm. Well, that is a big piece of beef, and there's the label off it. Can you see that? So I'm just going to cut that in half here, actually, while it's still in the wrapper. Oh. That's a big boy. Right, all the blood's contained in there, so I'm going to keep that to one side. Right, so what we've got, I've, you can just see I've cut it across. And you can see the marbling in there. You can see a bit of fat in the middle there. That's not a problem. It's nice, and you can see flakes of fat across through there. Now, it's always good to have some fat on meat. It makes it a bit tender when it's cooking, and it gives it a bit of flavour. But that, that's a good piece of beef. Uh, I'm wondering which bit to keep for steaks and which bit to make a joint. Let's have a... I haven't got the best knife in the world. Look at that. Oh, that's a nice steak, isn't it? Um, now I'm going to... I might trim a bit of fat off some of these. Don't need all the fat. Down there. Okay, so I've come back, put my butcher's apron on now. Um, but the other thing I think I better do is sharpen the old knife because uh, it's not particularly sharp. And this is just a normal kitchen knife, it's not a special knife. So uh, I have got a, a knife sharpener here. It's just a block with a, a couple of things in the middle you can just see there, which I'm going to run the knife through now. So we'll have a go at sharpening the knife and then cut a few more steaks. Okay, so I sharpened my knife up. Not the best of knives, though. It's a cheapy thing from Ikea, so uh, I don't think we're going to get a great edge on that. But I'm going to cut these steaks now, and then I'm going to eat one. These are Whopper steaks. Maybe I should make them a bit thinner. Oh, I think they're impressive. Okay, so I've got this big piece left here. I'm going to get a joint out of that and some more steaks, I think. 
in the meantime I've got my plate of steaks here let's take them over into the kitchen a bit better light over there so you can see I'm not a butcher I'm just a farmer who's having a go at, like most things in my videos just have a go now I've chopped off a nice big juicy steak here I don't mind the fat because you can choose to eat that afterwards but I'm going to stick that on the grill now okay it's not the tightest of steak you know presentation wise I haven't got that quite right but to be honest I'm sure it'll taste great and these, these other ones here I'm going to put in the freezer but this one I'm going to stick under the grill now and we'll have a little look a little taste test later let's put that over on the grill and uh, we'll come back and check that later okay so while the steak's cooking I've just been busy chopping up the rest of the steak um, I've made a joint I've put that in the bag already for the freezer and I'm just going to put these in freezer bags now I'm impressed with these meaty steaks they're really looking good I just can't wait to try one um, so I've got just normal freezer bags here uh, and I'm just going to bundle them up and then I'm going to store them for when I need a steak or me and my wife can have a steak dinner Now it's quite important to try and get the air out of these you don't really want a lot of air in the bag when you're freezing something but as you can tell I'm only an amateur doing this, I'm not a butcher I'm just doing this for myself and hoping for the best so I'm doing some steaks as individuals because it might just be me who wants a big boy for tea or I'm going to do a couple of dozen couple of them as uh, doubles well that's all my steaks wrapped up you can see there's more plastic than, than steaks here the, looking at the pile um, I'm going to stick these on the freezer now and then I'm going to try a bit of the steak um, I haven't made too much of a mess luckily my wife's out so she won't see what um, what's happened here until she watched the video but we'll try a bit of steak in a minute after I put this lot away. Oh, you can probably hear the beep in there. I've just set the smoke alarm off with the steak. Let's have a quick look at it. I shut the door. Now I quite like my steak quite rare. Um, there's still a bit pink in there. Depends how you like your steak. Well, I'm just going to stick that in a bit longer. Get the handle off there, otherwise it gets too hot. Right. That's done enough for my liking, so I'm just going to turn the grill off. A bit smoky. Take that out of there. And we'll try what this, see what this is like. I can already tell it's going to be a good bit of meat. The way the fork just sinks in really well. Because if you get a tough bit of meat, you struggle to get your fork in. But that's just like, just pushing in really well. Right, so let's go and try this for tea. Okay, so... Gonna see what this is like, but first of all, I get myself a beer. Um, this is not really refined dining tonight. I've got a can of Newcastle brown ale and a steak with no no trimmings. But to be honest, I've had a hard day. A beer and a big slab of meat is quite a good thing to have after a long day, and um, it's not about me doing a cookery program, really, is it? It's about trying different things. So this is the beef that came straight from the abattoir where we send our cows. Um, I've just got a bit, a bit of salt on here, I know that's bad for you, but I do like a bit of salt. Um, and I it was I think it was hung for 16 days before I got it, and then um, it was another 16 or 14 days in the fridge. So, so it's been aged, if you like. So I'm going to try it now. This isn't one of these things where I'm going to say it's good if it's not good. I'm going to actually see, say what I think. So it's cutting quite well. In fact, it's cutting very well. You ready? Let's have a look. Mmm. Oh, spot on. Mmm. Blimey. <laughs> I could eat, I could eat about five of these. Oh. Oh, lovely. Mmm. I tell you what, 
I'm no chef, but um, at least I can cook steak. Anyway, um, this isn't prom I'm not promoting beef, British beef or anything like that. I'm not, I, I'm not promoting Newquay Brown either, I just like it. Um, I'm just here eating a piece of meat after a hard day on the farm, but um, I can honestly say a nice bit of British sirloin steak, spot on. So anyway, wherever you are, whatever you're having to do tea tonight, have a good one. Cheers.